So we are winding down a very interesting year, 2020. We are approaching 2021. The question is, will the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, the longest name ever, will it be worth it in 2021? Let's find out. Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Jeff Davis. I'm a freelance filmmaker here in Texas and I've been shooting on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera for just over a year now. And I just wanted to share with you guys some of my thoughts on this camera, check out the rig a little bit and really find out if this camera is gonna be worth it in 2021. So this is my camera rig. This has been my A camera for just over a year. It's the only camera I've been shooting on. I don't even have a B camera. So this is my main workhorse. And I will say this camera has absolutely lived up to its expectations from me. It's just what I was looking for in a cinema camera. And coming from DSLRs to an entry level cinema camera, I think this is a great option. So this camera honestly has really good specs for the price point you're buying it at. So it has a micro four thirds sensor and it shoots at a number of different frame rates. In 4K, it'll shoot at 24, 30, 60. And then if you jump down to 1080, it'll shoot at 120 frames a second. And one thing I do love about this camera is that it films in RAW. And that's something I was really wanting when I was looking at cinema cameras. I was ready to get out of the DSLR world and really enter the raw cinema world. And I can honestly say I was a little nervous at first, but it was the best decision I've made. I love being able to film in raw and I'm not going to lie. It's almost like cheating because when you bring your footage into post, you're able to change your ISO, your white balance your exposure, your tints, without really affecting the image. So being able to, if I'm on a run and gun shoot, I shoot a lot of weddings and sometimes I just don't change the white balance or I'm not really exposing my ISO properly. So it's incredibly helpful to be able to change that stuff in post and have full control over it, you know, when I'm in post and I'm editing. So this camera shoots in 12-bit RAW which is incredibly impressive for the price point this is at. Most DLR cameras are shooting at 8-bit. Some of them with an external monitor, you can jump up to 10-bit. But being able to film 12-bit RAW has been so awesome. It's capturing so many colors compared to an 8-bit camera. So this camera has about 13 stops of a dynamic range, which is really good for the price point. I think most DSLR cameras are probably coming in around 10 stops. And one thing I do love is the highlight and shadow roll-off that this camera produces. It also produces really clean skin tones, which is something that I really love to work on when it comes to the post-production process. So another thing I do love about this camera is its five inch display screen on the back. It's completely touch screen and the menu system is incredibly easy to navigate through. I've used a number of different cameras and this is the easiest menu system that I've ever operated through. I mean, it's laid out so simple, my cat could do it. Finks, get over here and let's go through this menu, man. Come on. Okay, but for real, I mean, the cat probably could do it. I doubt he would because he's a little turd, but it's a very easy menu to operate through and it has a number of different settings in there. I mean, it's got focus peaking, zebras. Uh, you can pull up your histogram, all your different waveforms you can pull up, which is something that I love to have displayed on my screen because most of the time I'm using an external monitor, which this is a very bright monitor. So a lot of times it's a lot brighter than what my sensor is actually picking up. So being able to have the waveforms on my screen is incredibly helpful so I can see if I'm properly exposed or not. Okay, so jumping into the actual rig itself, I'll kind of show this to you guys. We'll break it down a little bit. Not physically break it down because I really don't want to take it apart piece by piece. 
but I'll explain to you guys exactly what I have rigged up on here and pretty much the overall price of this whole rig. So as you can see, we got the whole beast right here. It's pretty rigged out. I, I don't keep it minimal. I mean, there are a lot of shooters out there who keep the pocket cinema camera pretty minimal. I really wanted to rig this out and kind of add some weight to it because I do shoot a lot of handheld stuff and having a heavy rig just kind of helps counteract with any type of micro jitters or small shakes. So I really just kind of went all out, not all out. I mean, I didn't spend a lot of money as much as I could afford. So I didn't buy all of this at once. I have really just been buying it piece by piece over the past year. But what we got going on here is we have the camera body, of course. So I got the Viltrox speed booster uh, that goes from micro four thirds to EF mount. Also what that is doing is it's really giving me an extra stop of light in my camera. And it's almost tricking the sensor to make it think it's a little bigger than it is. So really this micro four thirds is a bit closer to a super 35 sensor. So going on from there, we have the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8 art lens. This is a great lens. It's really sharp and it has really good glass in it, especially for the price point. I mean, honestly, I think it's a must have. So moving up, I just have a really basic matte box on here. I mean, it's super cheap, cheesy. I've had this since way before I even had any of this rig, but I do like to keep it on here for some stuff because it does block um, a lot of unwanted flares. Sometimes I'm searching for flares, maybe when I'm shooting a wedding video, but on some shoots, I'm not wanting flares at all. So this matte box really helps to protect the lens from getting some unwanted flares in it. Going down, I just have a small rig base plate that I connect some 12 inch rails to. They're pretty big rails, but I wanted something longer because I knew I was gonna be attaching a lot of stuff to the rails. So I really just wanted as much versatility as I could jam into it. And right here we have the Tilta Nucleus Nano Follow Focus, which this thing is absolutely incredible, especially when you're using a fully manual camera that has manual focus. That was a huge fear was getting a cinema camera and not having any autofocus and having to manual focus all of my shots, especially when it comes to shooting weddings. I was so scared to shoot my first wedding manual focus, but honestly, it was a lot easier than I thought. And if that's something that's holding you guys back from getting a cinema camera or getting this camera, I would highly encourage you to take the step, take the leap, and really start using manual focus. It gives you so much more control over your image. This follow focus is absolutely incredible. You can set different in and out points, and especially when using photography lenses that have such a small focus throw, being able to set that in and out point throughout your small little focus throw, and then that gives you the ability to turn this dial a full 360 degrees while it only maneuvers throughout your small focus range. Coming back, we just have the small rig cage on here. I, I actually bought a little cheese plate so I could offset my handle. That way it's not in the way of the SSD here. So we just have a, a basic small rig handle. It's on the NATO rails here so I can pull it off really easily. And jumping up to here, I have the Port Keys 5 inch monitor, which this monitor is absolutely incredible. And I mean, especially when you're shooting on, on the pocket cinema camera, it doesn't have an articulating screen on the back. And especially if you're slapping a V-mount onto the back, I can't really see my screen because I got this bulky battery blocking it. So getting the external screen and one that's extremely bright in sunlight, I mean, I have never had an issue seeing my image when I'm in direct sunlight with this monitor. So it's a really good monitor. I would definitely recommend it. And then coming back, you know, we got the, the V-mount battery back here. It's just a basic new ear battery. However, for the price point, I think it was like $120, but it's a really good battery. And just from this battery, I'm powering the camera, 
the follow focus motor over here and my monitor. This battery pretty much powers the whole rig and I would say I could get a solid four hours, sometimes even more, uh, just from this one battery. But another thing I added to this was a Tiffin Pro Mist filter up here. So I got the, just a 1 8 and what that does is the Promis filter is really just kind of cutting off the sharp digital edge uh, that a lot of cameras have. So it's really kind of softening up the image just a little bit and adding a little bit of glow to the overall image. Oh man, how long has this red light been off? Ain't nobody told me the red light was off. Okay, someone could have at least told me that the red light was off, but we got the battery switched. We're good to go. So that was kind of a basic rundown of the rig. I probably have somewhere around $3,500 into the full setup. I have a few more pieces too, uh, just to make it into a shoulder rig. And if you're comparing that price to any other cinema cameras, you're honestly not gonna find it. I mean, this camera for the price point is a no brainer in my opinion. If you're looking to enter the cinema world and really just kind of get an entry level cinema camera, this is what I would totally recommend. Now there's plenty out there, but really it's going to depend on your budget. So in my opinion, yes, I think this camera will absolutely hold up in 2021. I just think for the price point you're getting it at, I mean $1,300 for the body for 4K, 60 frames, 12 bit raw. I mean, that's just something that you don't find. I don't know how Blackmagic packed all of that into this little body, but they did. And I think it's absolutely worth it. Well, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, please smash that like button. If you didn't enjoy it, please smash that like button. Also, if you're new to the channel, subscribe to it. Just help me grow the channel. I would love to keep creating content for you guys. So drop a comment below and let me know just what you guys would like to see next. I would love to hear your opinion on this rig or maybe if you're thinking about buying the Pocket Cinema camera or if you're thinking about buying any new camera in general. I'd love to hear about it. All right, thank you guys. Peace. Incredible. Yes. You did it. This camera gets me going. Shut the cameras, Shut the cameras off.